helps them to keep people off. But sometimes when uh, the offense is moving, you need to stick with what's best. Aubrey going to take it. This time he's going to throw it to number one, and he's got some running room, and he's got the sideline down the sideline, and he runs over a guy. First down for the Raiders. Fantastic. Senior to a senior. Aubrey Carter, number 11, our quarterback, to senior number one, Demetrius Williams. And he just got a nickname for me. I don't care what they call him, but he is known as the Punisher for the <laughs> he rest does. of the season. He punishes people. We've got trips up to the right. It's first down and close. There we go. He's going to fake it, and Aubrey's going to shoot. And he's going to go up the middle, and he's got a hole. He's at the five, bouncing around, down at the six. And that's a first and goal for the Raiders and a good run by Aubrey Carter. That was a very good run. I don't know what happened. It looked like there was a mix-up out wide. I, to be honest with you, Rev, it looked like the ball, it was a quick screen, and the ball slipped out of Aubrey's hand, and he caught it with his other hand almost. <laughs> and then he just took down and run. Well, does that go down as a pass play or a run play? <laughs> <laughs> he passed to himself. That's an illegal move. <laughs> We've got trips up to the top, Wesley Cothern in, and Aubrey's going to roll that way, and he's got a man in the corner, and good decision to throw it out of bounds as we had covered, coverage on the play there. As that's a tight space now to try to throw that ball, and it's going to be second and goal. Isn't it about time to run Anthony Madison out into the flats where he's been open all year? It's been open all year. You're right about that. And i tell you what, um, that's the one area where Aubrey has helped this team so far this year is uh, eliminate, eliminating mistakes, and that was a good job of throwing that ball out of bounds. I don't want to say it's been the best play all night, but from a quarterback standpoint, it was a very good play. Threw it up high, give his guy a chance. Only his guy a chance. And Aubrey's getting the signals from the sideline. Wesley Cothern to his left, and he's going to roll that way, and he's got Snell. Oh, and a throw is low, but about the only place you could put it is that was good coverage by number one, Xavier Stapleton. He's a junior and a good-looking DB there. And to be honest with you, if he throws that ball it's a pick high, six. it's picked to the six to the house. That was a good job. Third and goal for the Raiders. Here comes Anthony Th Madison. 3.08 <laughs> here and ticking in the first quarter. The Red Raiders are up 16 to nothing. And Long County, I guess you can say they've, they've kind of made it tough on this drive as they've got us to some third down and longs, but we've converted. we got uh, – we got an Osseo Washington on an island out top, and we got Anthony Madison, and I'm looking. I know we're going to a horseman package here. Yep, we got our big guy in there, and Meechus is going to take it, and he's going to follow that hole, and he punishes some people. Touchdown. Oh, he's going to mark him. He's got to mark him short. Right, surely he he's going to throw some out. people in there. He's looking at the spot, and he's going to no, mark gonna him short. Him down. That, that referee is trying to make it to a collegiate level, but it ain't going to happen because that was a <laughs> terrible call and a good effort, and we're going to run quick. And stay in our horsemen, and it's fourth and goal here for the Raiders, and, and uh, looks like Long County is going to take a timeout, and that that uh, that's probably a good timeout with them. We'll take a quick 30-second break. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle. County Red Raiders 16 to nothing with 241 left. It's fourth and goal, and we lined up to go for it, and Long County called a timeout. And if you're listening to us tonight, we do apologize for earlier, but at least you caught the game. And here comes our Raiders, and it looks like we're going to go for it here as we're marching our heavy package out. And they're going to keep their defense on the field. It's going to be an interesting call here. It is going to be interesting. Do you get creative or do you pound the punisher right up the middle? Well, they haven't been able to stop him. And uh, I think I'm going to go with my percentages and just see if uh, what's going to happen. Missed We're going to run off to the left, and they meet him, but he falls for touchdown Raiders. Touchdown Red Raiders. Good call by our coaching staff. As I tell you, Wesley starts leaning a little early on there. I'm just waiting for another flag, but it didn't happen. Good job by our offense and by our Red Raiders. 22 to nothing now, and the first quarter is not over. Is it? Uh, can you say we're a little bit upset 
from last week's performance. Nacio's going to take it to go for two, and he's just going to dance around, throw it in the back. Oh! And just did throw it out of bounds. And good play by the Raiders, 235 here. It's 22 to nothing. Your Red Raiders on top, and we're going to stay right here and talk about it. Uh, We've been told by our athletic director, Mike Thompson, which we appreciate all that he do, does for us, that the middle school uh, conference tournament or conference game has been canceled for tomorrow. And will be softball, that is. Softball will be rescheduled. I uh, have a few scores uh, that you may be interested in. Uh, Clinch County, 8. Wilcox County, 6. Brantley County, 12. Cook County, nothing. Fitzgerald, 14 to nothing on early. The Brooks County Trojans, who we faced last year, 21 to nothing over Pelham. And Atkinson County, 7 to nothing over Lanier. Ware County, 23. Bradwell Institute, 0. Aubrey Carter's doing the kicking duties for the Raiders, and he puts the ball down at the 40-yard line. And back deep for the Blue Tide is number 3 and number 4. We're going to receive. This time, Aubrey's going to do a little pooch kick, and number 11 fair catches it again. And this time... It looks like it's going to be close to the 30-yard line, which is the same spot that they started before. Be sure to stay tuned with us. Don't turn your dial because we have a special guest at the end of the first quarter in about two minutes and 30 seconds who is visiting our Raiders. Uh, one of our Raiders who played for us for four strong years, Tron Folsom, is going to be with Shane Bennett in just a few moments. We're going to hear from Tron. On a Tron's a freshman at Troy State University. And uh, we're excited about him. He really looks good. I talked to him before the game. Look forward to that interview. Number eight has, and he's going to take the snap, and he's going to run straight up the field, bounces outside, and a good tackle by Wesley Cothran, who has been in on just about every tackle, him and Demetrius Williams. And our linebackers are really playing good. That time our uh, safety trade, Stewart, came down downhill fast. Reminded me of another safety we used to have, Tron Folsom and Drell Green. That's right. So we've got twins to both sides for Long County. Number eight's going to take it, and he's going to get he's outside. And he's got to hold up the middle, but he's tackled short of the first down, and it'll be third down and about one. It's clear that very quickly they scratch their little game plan, and they're going to snap the ball to number eight. Stop number eight, and you win the game. They may be going to run him and then drop back and try to hit a deep pass or something. But I just feel very Jesus confident Brown. in our speed. Yeah, Jesus is coming in to play it defensive end position right here and he's going to try to get out he got a man and it's just a poor throw man wide open in the flats and if the ball's going to fall incomplete and it's going to be fourth down and one down 22 to nothing i'm pretty sure that long county is probably going to try to go for it i would i definitely would and i tell you exactly what i'd do i'd run number eight right up the middle and if you're the defense stop him i would blitz right up the middle they got tall lanky receivers but so far, they've struggled to get the ball to him. They almost got us to jump. That's Jesus Brown, but he didn't. Fourth and in inches. Going to shift it. He's coming this way. And there he goes. He's going to get it, and he's got enough. As he bounces outside, it's a first down and more, and he crosses close to the 50-yard line. Good tackle by Lagondrick Snell. And a first down. We just couldn't get to him. He had some big boys out in front, and all they needed was about six inches on the play, and that's their first first down conversion of the night. 127 left in the first quarter, 22 to nothing. Red Raiders on top of the Blue Tide. I just don't understand, uh, you know, that they they look as good on the hoof as any team that I've seen. They are. Uh, with maybe first, not quite as good as Benedictine. But. Their first year coach, and he brings a lot of energy to the game. Number eight's going to take it and run a little wow. quarterback counter, and he gets to the edge, a gain of about three or four, but he's brought down by K.J. Brown who's a very active linebacker. Well, quite honestly there, I, they didn't call it. I don't know if they, if they didn't see it or whatever, but one of their offensive linemen had Jesus Brown and was tackling him in the backfield. He was disrupting everything. We're under a minute here, and it's second down and six for a long tide, and they're finally across the 50. He's going to dump it underneath, and it's tipped or out of, in and out of the hands of number four as when he, literally when the ball came, he was looking for the punisher. Yeah. <laughs> Stephon Adderley is their H-back, uh, number four, was coming up underneath our linebackers. And I, I guarantee you he's seen the film where Demetrius Williams has lit people up and he was expecting any minute for his clock to get clean. It takes a lot of courage to go across the middle. This time they're going to send that young man, number four, into motion to the top where they have trips and they're going to roll the quarterback there. Xavion Brown bringing pressure and another poor throw. 
and it falls about a yard short of the receiver who was open. 37 seconds, and it's fourth and five here. Ball on the 45. Being an old receiver, even though that quarter that that ball was thrown away, if 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 that receiver rather than right, rounding off his route, if he'd have, if he'd have planted and come back, he may have could have made that reception, but he just rounded it off and he didn't stopped. Get his head around early. No, Tyler he didn't Wilcox get around. Wilcox comes in for the Raiders at defensive end, and they're going for it. Oh, we had him in the backfield, but we let him loose, and that's when he's dangerous. And it's going to be very. Oh, it looks like we're going to get the spot from one judge. He's going to spot it at the. 41 for a first down, and the other judge is going to run in and spot it at the 42. No, they didn't get it. Not That's according to the spot across the field. Fourth down attempt, and it's very close. We put on a good rush there, just couldn't grab a hold him in the backfield. I believe he's going to be a little bit close, or a little bit short, at least where I've got it spotted. This will be huge for the Raiders of Bacon County if they're short here and they hold them on this down. And they're going to stretch it, and he's short. First down for the Raiders. First starting. down, Red Raiders. Way to be. The 41-yard line. Good job, young men, as we chased him down. Boy, I thought he'd got it, didn't you? No, it was close. It was, it was very, close. Very good close. job for the Red they, Raider defense. They actually did a good job of spotting that as well because uh, the judge come in to the hash that was in and spotted it. So it was a good spot by the officials. This and line or this side judge over here has done a real good job, to be honest with you. Uh, he, he looks like he's, he's calling things about as fair as he can call them. I just can't get over how big Long County is. We're going to send Xavier Hayes in motion to the top, and Aubrey's going to roll that way, and he's got him wide open, and he dumps it, and it's caught first down and more. Xavier Hayes across the 45-yard line down at the 43-44 first down Raiders. Good route, good play. Nice, Chris, route. Just pitching and catching, pitching Xavier and catching. Xavier is a, is a fan of the New England Patriots, and he ran her out like Julian Edelman then. <laughs> we got twins to the top. Aubrey's going to send Demetrius across to the left, and he's going to roll that way, and he's got Demetrius in the flats, and a poor throw by Carter that time as it was a yard behind Demetrius. Did that ball get tipped? I don't know if it got tipped or not. It, it was a very bad throw, so we're going to say it got tipped as Aubrey has been on target all day long and see if Aubrey can break the record and go 24 for 25. <laughs> seven seconds. We're in the right number, isn't he? Seven seconds left. Yes, he is. In the first quarter, 22 to nothing, your Red Raiders on top. Aubrey's going to roll back to his left, and we pick up the blitz, and he throws it about cross, and it's almost picked off as the safety was just reading the eyes of the quarterback. That was a good play by that safety. It's going to be third down and 10 now for the Raiders as we tried to sneak one in. And it just did not work. Boy, I, I want KJ, did you see the block that KJ Brown? I did not see it. I was looking downfield. Did so he lay they, somebody away? They brought a blitz and he stepped up in there and knocked him back into the traffic. Just <laughs> took him out of the play and set the corner for Aubrey. Be honest, I was looking down. I wasn't expecting him to throw back like he was, and we, we had enough for a first down if he had thrown out here. Just a trick play trying to go. Number 14 is going to go in motion, and he's going to run across the middle, and we're going to drop a screen, and it's wide open. we got some big hefties out front, and he's down across KJ. the 30, and he's crossing the field across the 20 down at about the 15. Great play call. A screen play on the field. And what we got right here? I think the coaches bark the signal is they're going to get a false start probably on Snell here as he started in motion, stopped, and then went back in motion. There's That's no there's nothing wrong with that as long as nobody else is moving. How's he calling an ineligible field uh, player, uh, ineligible man downfield on a screen pass? That was just, just strange, and that's exactly what he's calling, and Coach Kofer's not going to be happy about that. It's the end of the first quarter, but before we go down to Shane Bennett and talk to our outstanding uh, senior who graduated last year, a freshman in college, Troy, uh, Tron Fine. Folsom, we're going to wait and see what the officials. Well, you can't end a quarter or a half on a penalty if the penalty is accepted, and I don't see any reason that it would not be accepted. They're still working it out here. As uh, We did a great job on third down to 10 of dropping back and throwing a screen pass. And boy, we are big hefties. Man, we had five of them out in front. And uh, you're only supposed to have three, so maybe I'm telling on us. <laughs> maybe we work downfield. 
but we had a crew out in front setting a block, and here comes the official. They waved the flag, waved off. The flag off. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. Let's go down to uh, Shane Bennett on the sideline, our family vision care. Eyes on, on the, the field. field. Shane? Hey, guys, I got one of Bacon County's own. Mr. Catron Folson is home from Troy State University, um, one of the big guys from last year and the last four years, actually. Uh, Tron's been a big part of Bacon County football. Tron, buddy, you've been, uh, you've been up there for a while now. Um, what do you say? What would you say is your biggest impact here that's helped you when you went to Troy? Um, basically doing all my work in classroom and hard on working in the weight room and on and off the field. It's basically academically what really got me to where I need to be because in the classroom, I'm already ahead of each other because I already know a lot of stuff that I already did from high school. And then the weight room, we do a lot of similar stuff that we do in high school and college. So basically, if you get what you need to do in, in the weight room in high school, you'll basically be doing the same, some of the similar stuff around in the college. Man, I hope the teachers are listening to that. Tron, what are you, uh, weight room wise, uh, Coach K does a good job in the weight room. How would you compare our weight room to what you're doing up at Troy? Um, like the workouts that we do are somewhat similar because we have fast-paced workouts and they be like short and quick and we do a lot of stuff with the bands in college that we did in high school and like the up-tempo runs that we did in the high school is basically just the same so the workouts are, are quite similar to high school, uh, college. All right. Tron, good to have you back, brother. Good to see you. Bye -bye. Hey, guys, I think he's put on about 15 LBs. He looks good. Um, I'm proud he's back with us tonight. Well, thank you, Shane. Uh, I talked to him a little bit. He says he's in at 215, and I think he played about 195 or 200 last year. So uh, he tells me they're either going to keep him out of safety, depending on how much weight he gains, or possibly putting him at an outside linebacker, just an outstanding athlete with outstanding uh, speed. And, and he's already learned that uh, you get it done in the – classroom before we're going to take the snap here and going to hand it to kj who's got a hold he's pushing some people around a gain of about four for the raiders and it's going to be second down second down and six i want to give a shout out to coach ken kofer because i think he absolutely talked that officiating crew out of that flag a while ago he brought him over to himself and i think what he was trying to tell him is look that's a screen pass that's thrown behind the line of scrimmage and as long as it's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, then uh, you can't have an ineligible player downfield. Aubrey is getting the signals from the sideline. He's going to send Brody Fitchett in motion, makes it trips to the right, and he's going to do a quick screen to Inacio, and that ball is low and incomplete as Aubrey got lit up after the throw there. They brought a heavy blitz from the outside, and we picked the guy up on the outside, and the inside tackle broke free. Just a busted assignment there by our line who's been doing an outstanding job tonight as we've got 22 points on the board, and you couldn't do it if you took those big guys away. We're going to come out here in trips. We've got Anasio, Xavier Hayes, and Demetrius Williams, the punisher, down to the right. This time we're going to drop back, and he's looking, he's looking. He's going to dump it out to KJ, who makes a good cut. He's cut across field, and he's got days of grass. He goes Five, four. Touchdown! What a play by the Raiders. <laughs> and their coach is barking about a block in the back. But and that was, was a great play for the Raiders as K.J. Brown caught a screen out of the backfield or a little, just a little dump pass and made a quick juke. And, boy, do we have some athletic young men on our team. I'm telling you, it's 26 or 28 to nothing right now. We line up in this, uh, I don't even know what you would call this play. And this time we're going to attempt the extra point for the first time tonight. And it's been the strategy of our coaching staff. If we go for it early, we keep going for it till we don't get it. That's right. And then when we do, we bring on Aubrey Carter, who up to this point of the season has been money, money, money. Jules Holden, he gets the snap down and the whistle blown. As thank God the whistle was blown because I just jinxed him. A very bad kick by Aubrey there, but we're going to reset. And he heard the whistles. That's what happened. So they're going to back us up as there was a false start on the play. Lee County Trojans 28, Mitchell nothing. Irwin County 14-7 to over Telfair. In your Honda South Georgia game of the week, Turner County 14, Charlton nothing. And wow. That's, yeah, wow, that's a jaw dropper there. Fitzgerald 20 to nothing over Early County. We're just trying to find scores from around the region. Aubrey kicks it this time. The kick is up, and it's no good. It had the distance, but it was off to the left. 11.09 here in Ludowisi, Georgia. The Red Raiders, 28. Blue Tide, nothing. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle.
team is about to kick the ball deep. I don't expect us to do anything much different than what we've already tried, uh, either a pooch kick or one time we did try an onside kick. I'm ready to see the, the stats for this uh, first half. Shane always does a good job. This time we're going to try a little onside, try to sneak it in, but he kicked it a little too hard. No damage done as this time we give him a little bit of – of room to work. Ball's going to start at the 35 for the Blue Tide, who have struggled on offense. Is it because of their scheme, or are we playing that well on defense tonight? Yes. Okay. <laughs> both. <laughs> it was yes to both. I don't think they're doing anything different that we've not already seen all year long. Maybe the wing tee last week was something different to us, but uh, I would say they're running something similar to what Charlton run a little bit. They've got twins to the top and bottom. They're going to hand it to the big guy, 21, who tries to bounce outside. But you're not <laughs> going to outrun Xavion Brown. Oh, my favorite player, Xavion Brown. Drops him for a loss of six. What does he weigh, 140 pounds? Maybe, and you're not going to outrun him. No, he weighs 140 pounds. And listen to this. I know you hear me tell this every week, but he plays defensive tackle. He plays cornerback and wide receiver. You tell me how a kid can do all of that. He's just got a motor like Anthony Florence had for the yes, Raiders. That's and, right. And we've got uh, a heavy package now, kind of. Still in shotgun, but two halfbacks and fullbacks going to bring number four across in motion. Going to roll out, pick up the block, and he's going to dump it. This time it's an incomplete pass overthrown. Very good so defense by Cavante Merritt, even if it had been on, on point. I don't know that it would have been caught. He's playing a very good game as far as a wideout. He and uh, LaGondrick Snell both are playing very good at cornerback. Kevin Merritt, a young man who had to pay his dues in the system and has stuck around for three years, and it's paying off for him now. We see uh, Franklin Brinson's in the game. So is Sean Morgan, number six. Morgan's actually playing in the safety position. Well, we, we're playing cover two right now, it looks like. Oh, he got trips, and it's a straight drop back, and Xavion got him in the backfield. Another <laughs> sack for Xavion Brown. Fantastic. Fantastic play by Zebion Brown. You go, boy. And shot and uh, turn up Brinson, as I call him, holding his guns up. <laughs> and that's exactly what that was for, and that's going to bring on a punt. And I don't know if Long County was hollering at the officials or hollering at their head coach for that call, but there's nothing you can do when that young man, Zebion just ran right by the big tackle. Well, when you're 28 to nothing, you, you've got to – you got to try to do something to, to stop them. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a two-edged sword. If you run the ball and don't make it. Uh, we kind of go after it. It's a good punt by the Blue Tide. And Trey's going to take that ball at about the 31. And block. he's got some blockers. And he's up the field. And he breaks a couple of tackles. And he finally brought down close to the 50-yard line. And a good return of about, I don't know, close to 18 yards on the play. 18-yard return and first down for the Raiders. His running style, his long stride, reminds me a lot of Tron Folsom he does, last man. year. He gets those arms. Sometimes uh, I, I know, well, I'm just going to say it. I don't mean anything by it, but sometimes he looks just downright goofy <laughs> running it and some of the moves he makes, but it's effective, and he's very fast. And the one thing I love about him and love about our team is we've got a team like full of courage, and they're going to call holding and back us up. I didn't see it. I don't know where the hold would have occurred. You've got to slow down this train because it's on, it's on the track, and it hadn't stopped yet here. I would really love, just from an injury standpoint and everything else, I would really love for us to be up like 35 to nothing or whatever uh, when the uh, half ends so that we could have somewhat of a running clock in the end. We're a little bit beat up and nicked up after uh, two hard weeks versus Charlton and uh, Benedictine and uh, – so uh, Aubrey's, next week we got off. So. Aubrey's in at quarterback. He's going to take it, and he's going to hand it to number two, who breaks a couple tackles and makes another spin move. And they just drug him down by his shirt as he made something out of nothing. And I don't know who he's been watching in college or the pros, but Brody Fitch's moves, spin yeah. move and juke. Very nice. Vidalia up 28 to nothing on Groves. We rush to the line when we have trips. This time we're going to shift him into the backfield again, and they're going to hand it, drop back, play action, and we're going to go deep, and we got one-on-one, -on -one and we got a man beat, and a good, oh, almost caught, and we got a pass interference call on the play as Inacio had two men beat, underthrown football, and a good job by Inacio coming back. Your, your, uh, your thoughts on the pass interference call? Well, it, I thought it was played well uh, myself. 
but the ball came down and it looked like it hit the, the Long County defender in the back of the head. He never turned to make a play on the ball. I don't know what the, the actual judgment or actually what the correct call is on it, but they did call pass interference. It's going to be first down. Almost, almost a good play uh, by Nasio Washington. You have, just to turn your around, you have to turn your head around and make an attempt on the ball. And Nasio still brought, like you said, almost made it. By day 28, Groves nothing, which we figured that would happen. Uh, that's in the region. Uh, we were to, I was told during the break that Turner's number two and Charlton's number one, so that's a battle. Brody going to come in motion across. We're going to stick it in his belly. Going to draw back, and we're going to throw it deep. And this time we got a man again. Stale this time with the catch and a pass interference again on the play. And that was a pass interference regardless of what Long County says or thinks. You know, sometimes you forget what football looks like when you neglect to play it for so many years. <laughs> That was cold, quarterback. <laughs> Eight forty-three here. It's twenty-eight to nothing, and all the young man has to do is turn around and and put his hand up. Just turn his head one time, and it's not pass interference. It was exactly the same situation on the the last uh, play, the previous play where they got pass interference. The defender never turned. He was just constantly mirroring our receiver. Never turned to make a play on the ball, and the ball hit him. And that is pass interference. I will say this about Long County. They are a good-looking team. You they say, are. how can you say that? It's 28 to nothing. They're a good-looking team. It's just going to take some time. Aubrey takes it back, and it's tipped and almost picked off. As that was a good play by their linebacker who saw the play action by Aubrey Carter and tipped the ball in the air. It's second down and 10. And uh, they've slowed down our offense a little bit here. Yep. Early in the second quarter, 8.42 and ticking, 28 to nothing. Red Raiders on top. Xavier Hayes comes in the game. Aubrey Carter goes out. Dawson Jewell comes in at quarterback. Wesley Cothran in the backfield with him. And Long County is going to call a timeout on defense. And with that timeout, it's 28 to nothing. Your Red Raiders on top of the blue tie. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle. Family Vision Care eyes on the field. Shane, what are we looking at down there? Talking about uh, coach, uh, the offense slowing down a little bit. That's on purpose. Coach K is just uh, moving some folks in. You can probably tell from the box. They're moving folks in and out, putting some folks in there, not normally at different positions, just trying to get some uh, different looks and get some guys some playing time. So the uh, only thing really slowing this machine down right now is our own selves. I understand. But we are marching and uh, – Looks like our Red Raiders are coming back with eight minutes and 42 seconds left in the second quarter. Your Red Raiders are leading 28 to nothing, and um, looks like Dawson Jules back in at quarterback. And he's going to send Brody Fitch it in across, and they come up the field, and they got him in the backfield, but he eludes a couple of tacklers, and he shoots up. He's a shifty little guy still on his feet, dragging folks close to a first down. They finally whistle it dead, and you can see some frustration setting in for Long County as there's a little pushing going on, and literally – uh, that Brody Fitchett is running like a man on fire tonight. Hey, why did he blow a whistle? Did he go down and touch his knee when he was spinning or something? Uh, it looks like they're gonna. That's where they're gonna spot it, and it's gonna be third down and three for the Raiders. And we've got trips out to the right. Jewel stays in at quarterback, and it's gonna be a quarterback draw. He gets to the outside, gets to the corner, and that young man's gonna learn to run north and south and not east and west. Is a loss on the play. At the 30-yard line, and Jules got a lot of talent. As you can tell, Jules is a little bit of raw around the edges. Still does a good job of operating the offense, which is very important for the Raiders. And we bring Amitris Williams in at quarterback. The Punisher's in. And this time we've got our heavy package in, and we're going to shift Cothran, and we're going to bark a hard count, and we jumped as Anasio Washington jumps and that's going to be a false start so I expect us to a little pooch kick here maybe we'll go for it we'll see coaching staff have done an outstanding job tonight of calling a game completely from offense to defense so far and we still got 742 left in the second quarter 
Jeff Davis up 7 to nothing on McIntosh in the second quarter. Ware County, 30. Bradwell Institute, nothing. Wayne County is losing to Liberty County, 6 to nothing in the second quarter. Boy. Just a few scores. And it is fourth and nine, and we are lined up as if we're going to go for it. And we shift to that Forceman package. And he's going to take it, and this time he's going to roll out. And he's got a man in the flats wide open. It's caught for a first down and more. He's still rumbling. Anthony down the sideline, 15-yard gain and there's a first that, down there's that for the Raiders. I've been and that about. time the quarterback throwing was the punisher, Amitris Williams. Is there anything this young man cannot do? <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great play. That play has been effective all year long. You just can't stop it. No, Anthony Madison in the in the uh, flats and uh, Metris hit him on stride. Great play, great pass, great play. Metris stays call. in at quarterback, and he this time he pulls it and he's got the corner. He shoots north to south and runs a man over. My lord, that man's <laughs> something to deal with. He doesn't look to miss people. He looks to hit people. I mean, just shoved him off with the forearm. Very. Very, very Marshawn Lynch-like. Yes. He stays in at quarterback, and we try to speed up the tempo. Second down and five. This time we're going to take it. He's going to hand it to Wesley Cothran, who falls forward for a gain of about, I don't know, three yards maybe for the Raiders. Third down and three. Third down and four, manageable. As our front line there, all you see is white jerseys pushing yellow, uh, blue jerseys back. 6-22, 6-20, 19-18, and ticking here in the second quarter. 28 to nothing, Red Raiders on top. Beecher's still in at quarterback. He shifts 32 in motion. He takes it. He gets north and south, and he's dragging folks. Down first down. Across the five, down to the four, and another first down for the Raiders. For the Raiders he's gonna get a first and they're going to rush it here, as we yes. always do. First and goal, and we are just, we are just making them like it here. In Long County. Stop me if you can. He's going to take it, and he's going to hand it to Cothran. He shoots up the middle, down to the two, and no signal there. They finally signal it down at the one-yard line, second and goal. Great job by our offensive line. Can I say this, that our offensive line is just manhandling Long County. Long County's big guys are standing up. Meacher's going to take it, and this time he's going to shoot up. Touchdown! Again. Again. <laughs> T.D. Williams. Williams. Demetrius Williams is having a night, but he couldn't be having this night without the offensive line. I, my hat's off to these big uglies is what I've always called them. And, and, Mother, if you're listening to me, I'm not talking about your son being ugly, but these offensive linemen, that's just what they're known. They're the big uglies. They don't get, they don't get any attention unless they mess up. But these guys are really paving a way for us tonight. And this time we're going to set up and go for the extra points, 34 to nothing. We missed our last um, two Attempts we missed the two-point conversion this time. It looks like Dylan Kelly is going to be in to kick for the Raiders young Young guy there little guy and Aubrey Carter is going to hold snap is high But he gets it down the kick is up and it's just short Just short and it's 34 to nothing 538 here in the second quarter ref Man, that's an outstanding on that particular extra point right there. Uh, they've got a uh, young man that's just really putting heat on us and uh, that could have very well been a personal foul because he dove into our quarterback not hard but he did make contact with our quarterback or our holder and our kicker so that's a dangerous dangerous play but we didn't get it so with 538 left in the second quarter you're listening to 93.5 the Eagles Receives the kick, and he's broke across the 35 to the 40 on a good return. And I can tell you why. Number four for Long County, Stephon, that, their wide receiver. Stephon Adderley, yes. That's why we've not kicked it deep so far. As he shot out of a cannon, found a hole, and got the best field position, starting field position tonight for the Long County Blue Tide. 
We need to hold them scoreless here. We don't need to give up anything cheap. Don't want to give no momentum. That's right. We bring in. We're stacking that box. We've got eight or nine people in the box, and they're going to shift their guys. Number eight at quarterback for him. He barks a signal, and he hands it to number 22, who's got a hole or two, but he's met by some Raiders oh. and drove back by our safety. The Punisher. No, that was that Demetrius. Yes. Demetrius flew up and delivered a lick. And, and folks, when we say deliver a lick, it's I'm telling you, you see the head snap back, and they. they That's how you know it's Demetrius. <laughs> That's how you know it's him. He's in a pile, all of a sudden, it starts going backwards, and you know Amitris is in there somewhere. They're going to try to speed it up here. It's second down and six. This time he takes it, and he gives it number 21. And he's got a hole, and he shoots right through the middle of the defense, and Wesley Cothran hustles him down, chases him downfield, first down for the Tide. And I don't know what happened if we brought a blitz on that play or not. I really couldn't pay attention to it, but number 21 showed his speed. And that's got the fans a little bit excited. 34 to nothing still for the Raiders, 452 and ticking. We got twins to both sides. He's going to take it, and he's going to hand it to number 21. This time he get, tries to get outside, but he can't. Was that Wesley again on the Yes, Wesley Cawthorn. He shot in on a blitz out from the outside, and a shoelace tackle loss of about four on the play, and that will kill some momentum that you get on offense. Sometimes I think speeding up the offense hurts you. They got twins to the top and the bottom here. Number eight takes the snap, and he drops back here. He's straight back, going to be flush from the pocket. He's dancing around. We got guys all over him, and he overthrows the guy out in the flats. Incomplete, third down and 13. Boy, our young guy Castile took a shot. He sure did. He as did the lineman was peeling back on him, and I knew it was coming. I just couldn't get it out. Watch out! I thought it was going to be Zebion that got it, but he was a step ahead of him. Zebion's quick. Third down and 13 for the Long County Blue Tide. We need an interception right and here. This time the quarterback's just a straight seven back drop. They're going to they got to get a little screen, and he gets fooled, and that ball's dropped. I don't know if it's going to be a fumble. or They're actually calling him incompletion. Incomplete. Incompletion. As I, <laughs> that was, we had, the quarterback had to throw it over a lineman. Who was that to hit him? He had to throw it over a lineman, and that was that was number one who come up on the hit. He was on that side, and that's the only guy that will hit him that way. And Demetrius just, Williams just wiped him out again. I know we talk a lot about him, but he just he punishes people. Man crush on the punisher. Yeah. Number eight drops straight back. It's third, fourth down and long, and he's got plenty of room, and he, that guy can dance around, but we got a guy coming up from behind, and good hustle play, and – He's brought down, and that young man stays down there. He kind of forgot that there were people running behind him. Good sack by Castile, and that's our fourth sack of the night. That's probably our sixth tackle for a loss tonight. Three minutes and 53 seconds left in the second quarter. Your Bacon County Red Raiders, 34, Long County nothing, and we are set and ready to go. And I know this defense is getting tired. That was actually Tyler Wilcox. On the play, or on the sack. This time we've got, it's going to send Nacio across the motion, going to hand him the ball on a speed sweep, and he gets to the outside. He's fast. He goes. He's down the sideline, and he's just got a few to beat. They finally knock him out of bounds. He's hit a little eight, but Washington gain of about 25 or 30, and that's going to spot the ball at the 37, 37-yard line. We're having a lot of whistle, and we got something going on. I don't the know. only thing that's going to slow us down tonight is the, the officials. Oh. They're calling us with a motion penalty. Like I said, the only thing that's going to slow us down tonight is penalties because we are just a well-oiled machine tonight. Sorry for the silence there. I was looking, trying to find some scores. It says at halftime, Jeff Davis seven, McIntosh nothing. In I don't know war. that's that been that either not been updated. That's a very close football game. Well, We're they, looking Aubrey Carter back in at quarterback right now, and we've got. Uh, doubles to both sides. Aubrey takes a snap and he rolls to his right looking. He's got a man open. Oh, in and out of the hands of Xavier as he let the ball travel too deep into his chest and it bounced off his pads incomplete. And that's his first incomplete incompletion of the season. 
Yeah, or let me say that right. That's his first drop pass of the season. Yeah, that ball hit him. Uh, that was that was not a bad pass. You're right, exactly. He, he let it ball get him too close. Yeah, have to catch it with your hands, but he knows that as he's done a good job so far this season. It was a good pass. Ball's a little bit wobbly. Every now and then with Aubrey, he'll turn his hand the wrong way and gets a little bit of a float on the ball That's instead of a pitcher in him. Yeah, that curveball. 324 here left in the second quarter, 34 to nothing, and we've got an empty backfield with twins to the top. This time we send an Osseo in motion, that speed sweep. We put it in his belly. Oh, good job by Aubrey. He's got a lot of green grass, and he's going to cut, make another cut, but a good tackle by number 15 after a gain of about six, and that's going to break up third down and probably eight as we were backed up because of a penalty. Good decision by Aubrey. Big run by Ignacio was, was brought back after a holding call on the Raiders, but that was a good job by Aubrey of avoiding pressure, and he's just quick enough to do that. You got Ron Johnson in, and we call a timeout. So with two minutes and 47 seconds left in the second quarter, Bacon County 34, Long County nothing. You're listening to Red Raider Radio on 93.5 The Eagle. Team still on the sideline uh, in a timeout. Matt, what you got? FEM seven, coffee nothing. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to distract you. You didn't distract me at all. And that's fine. We're just giving some updates, some scores as as they come in to us. And that is a, a halftime score. Jeff Davis seven, McIntosh nothing, and that just shows you how it can go any given night. As Jeff Davis was in the fight for their lives down here, and we've pretty much done whatever we wanted to with the Blue Tide tonight. 34 to nothing, 246 in the second, and it's a big third down and about nine for the Raiders. Aubrey Carter in at quarterback. We bring number 15 in motion. Will play action. He's got a pocket. He steps up in that pocket, and he's met by the defense. He gains a yard as he did a good job of stepping up in the pocket, but he took his eyes off of downfield. I look for the pooch kick here. We're not going to play. And that was, that was good coverage by the long tide that time. If I had to uh, to fault that play at all, and, and uh, these coaches have forgot more about football than I know, but it looked like every pattern was deep. We didn't have anything underneath, and it took a little bit of time to develop, and they well, were we able to break them all down. night long. That is true. That is true. If that just ran by them. And we're going to do our little pooch kick as Aubrey gets it. He's got time end over end, nobody back, and we're going to get a roll, but it goes sideways. It's a good, good roll. Good play. It bounced out of bounds. But, however, they'll take over at the 30. And that was a, a good little punt of, I don't know, how many yards? 5, 10, 20. 25 or 30 yards, but it was very, very effective. Nobody got to it. It rolled out at the 30-yard line. By far the most effective punt that we do. <laughs> no doubt. minute and 59 seconds left in the second quarter. And uh, with all the throwing that's going on, this half is kind of – uh, slowed down on us a little bit uh, because of the stopping of the clock every time there's an incomplete pass. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime. We got some good halftime stats. And there you go, a good tackle there. Oh, well, he's still bouncing around but running backwards, and he's going to be brought down finally by a host of Raiders, and we ripped the ball out. Was that? Did we rip it out? Yes, it looked like we did. And he fell no, back. he fell back on it. He, he did, 141 and ticking, and, that young man needs to learn that we're fast and running backwards isn't going to happen. That was a loss of about uh, 15 yards. He just kept going backwards and backwards, and that's kind of the story. That's that's what they're envisioning in their minds. Where are these Raiders coming from? Get out of the way. And here we are. He takes it, snaps, drops straight back, and he's going to throw it deep, and he's actually got a man, but good. Oh, what a catch. What a catch by Long County as it was an underthrown ball 
and called it the 50. Wow. That was uh, our, our receiver or our defensive back jumped up just a little too soon, but that was an outstanding catch. I don't, I don't know. You just gonna have to give a tip your hat to the other guy on that one. Well, you got six foot two going up against five foot eight. Yep. And it looks like we're gonna call a timeout now to kind of That's gather ourselves as we don't want to give up anything. We want to walk out of here with a dub, with a W and a shutout. Our first shutout of the year and want to make a statement, which we've made a statement so far, uh, have we on offense and um, just a, almost a perfect game called by our coaches. Now. Well, one of the things that we were very concerned about coming into this game was um, that we were going to be disciplined. And I think, uh, I think we have answered that. We have been where we're supposed to be. Sometimes you've got to tip your hat to the other guy, uh, like that play there where he just makes an outstanding play. But the difference in the two teams has not been athleticism. The difference in the two teams has been discipline. And your Bacon County Red Raiders have played a very disciplined, all-around good ball game tonight so far. I can't take, you know, I can't say enough about them. We've just, we've come out down here to take care of business. And we've played football the way we're supposed to, supposed to play football. In the past, Bacon County has been known to uh, become undisciplined at times, but not tonight. There you have it. That's a good breakdown. He's going to take the snap, drop back number eight, and he's looking to dance around, and he throws it across the middle, and it's caught for a first down. As we were kind of just standing around, just trying to figure everything out, he was just no pressure that time by the Raiders, and number eight, one thing he can do is dance around a little bit, and that's a first down for Long County. And they're going to try to move it fast as we're under a minute here. Seven, 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 drop. Dumps it out, number 21, the flats, and we have Amitris Williams there. And he ain't going nowhere. For a loss on the play. And he gets your hand, he gets his hands on you. Nothing's happening. Long County calls a timeout with 35 seconds left in the second quarter. They're trying to mount some type of drive. They've had two tremendous catches. Quarterback's done a fantastic job of stepping up in the pocket. You're listening to Red Raider Radio on 93.5 The Eagle. Raiders come on the field. We brought in some fresh legs because they're just dancing around a little bit. We're going to see if we can't put some pressure on the quarterback. But uh, it's second down at about 13 as Demetrius Williams uh, with, a, with a little swing pass out of the backfield a while ago. Demetrius Williams came up and dropped their Long County running back. 35 seconds here, 34 to nothing. Long County got trips out to the left. And he's going to drop back at quarterback. He's going to get to the outside, but he's got Xavion on and pressure him around. Dancing Xavion and Tyler Wilcox. Another sack. And we've got a flag on the play. It looks like maybe a face mask, but that'll be the fourth or fifth sack of the night for Xavion and hat, yeah. Wilcox. Personal foul face mask what against was. us, but I, uh, they let the block in the back go. <laughs> Just an honest mistake. Honest mistake there for the Raiders as they're just hustling. Number eight, he's trying to dance and get away, and he may can from most people, but not from Xavion Brand and Tyler Wilcox. Nope. They've done a good job. Bacon County 34 to nothing over Long County. Big personal foul penalty. 25 seconds left to go. Wayne County, Liberty County 6 to 3 at half. Ware County 44 to nothing over Bradley Institute. At halftime, Jeff Davis 7 to nothing over McIntosh. And Vidalia a whole lot over Groves. Long County, number eight, going to take the snap. He drops back, and he's got a hole, and he's going to try to rush Anthony on his back, and we get him that right at the line of scrimmage and bring good, him down. Good good pursuit by Anthony Madison. Done a fantastic job for us on that particular play. You can see the speed of the Bacon County Red Raiders. They may not take get a playoff. Two seconds and ticking, and it's going to be, uh, he doesn't get it off there. That's going to be the end of the first half. It's 34 to nothing. Stay tuned with us for a halftime show right now. We're going to go down 
to our family vision care eyes on the field Shane Bennett with coach Ken Kofer. Shane what's coach got to say? Hey coach uh, explosive first half um, what do you take away from it what we got to do different in the second half um, if anything? Uh, just I mean right here at the end I think we we nailed them we came after some uh, uh, some pass rush that's what we've been needing the whole year right there and some of these little young guys are getting after it we have a small defensive line that we're having to play. We knew that at the beginning of the year, and they're finally coming through for us right here chasing this quarterback. That's what we needed them for. But offensively right here just had one stop where we weren't scoring. Kids are getting after it. Things are working pretty good. One or two penalties have cost us big plays right there before the half, or we get another score. And that's what we try to do is get as many as we can in the first half. And then not relax, but we get some younger kids in the game right there. But that's what we want to do is just keep after their tail and come back out here with a good attitude. We can't come out here cocky because we have a 34 to nothing lead. I know y'all are a little concerned after last week and, and what was going on with, with Benedict team, but I think the boys have responded uh, coming back this second day. They're playing hard. I think they're having a good time with it. We are too. I'm calm for the first time in, in two weeks right here, so uh, nobody hear anything bad from me. But we're going we're gonna to push these kids right here at halftime uh, to come out here and get after their tails. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Well, there you have it. And here at halftime, 34 to nothing, Bacon County on top of the Long County Blue Tide. We're going to go to a break, enjoy the halftime show. When you come back, the Rev and the QB here will have the second half, uh, the second half football game for you. You're listening to 93.5 The Eagle. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dr. Lane Reichert, Mr. Ross New, Dr. Stephanie Dean Cooks, and the Bacon County Board of Education, we are proud to present the Bacon County Raider Regiment Band. The Raider Regiment is under the field direction of Drum Major Sarah Williams, Band Captain Evan Tanner, Color Guard Captain Destiny, Gun Destiny Johnson and Gabrielle Guthrie, Drum Captain Jared Lee, Woodwind Captain Michaela Taylor, High Brass Captain Matthew Stevens, and Low Brass Captain Devin Carter. Tonight the band will be performing selections by Fall Out Boy, Centuries, Uma Thurman, and American Beauty. We hope you enjoy the show, and thank you for your attention.
this moment? It doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. Bennett Bennett and Johnson Insurance Agency in Alma is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Drum majors, is your band ready? You may take the field for halftime entertainment.
County Blue Tide Band is finishing up their halftime show. We're about three minutes and 30 seconds away from uh, kickoff. I don't know that we're going to get it in exactly at that time, but uh, welcome back. Your Bacon County Red Raiders are leading 34 to nothing, and it's been one of the most complete games that I personally have seen Bacon County play in the last four or five years. We've been very disciplined in what we're doing, and we're just looking for the second half to come back with the same intensity, and maybe some of our younger players will get in and uh, – that's what we need because after this year, we have a little bit of fall off as far as upperclassmen is concerned. And we need some of our younger people uh, that's coming up to be able to fill in these positions and have some game experience. Quarterback, what you got? Yep, it's been a good a good first half. Uh, can't say, say it any better. Um, just want to thank all of our sponsors for all they do. Bennett and Bennett. Is that right? And Johnson Insurance for sponsoring our NFHS, as well as um, some of the sponsors for the radio. We just appreciate all that they do for us. A few scores, Appling County 28, Toombs County 7. Um, I'm looking down my list on Twitter. You know, that Twitter, son, is a good, good thing for information. Lee County 56, Mitchell uh, nothing, Thomas down, County, or I'm sorry, Thomas Fifteen to nothing was the last score we had. Benedictine over Bryan, Brooks County twenty-seven to nothing over Pelham. Clinch County has taken uh, control of their game, thirty-three to eighteen over Wilcox. A um, couple of private schools we don't care about. Ware County is up forty-four to nothing at half over uh, Bradwell Institute. Is that, is that who they were playing? And uh, those are some of the scores that we have from around the area. And uh, we're going to continue to pay attention to uh, Jeff Davis. Uh, I will say the Indians of Idalia taking care of business, 45 to nothing over Groves. And uh, we're going to go down to Shane Bennett in just a few minutes, not right this second. But once he gets back on the sideline, we're almost under a minute here before uh, the teams come out and start warming up. And uh, got some big games going on in college. Uh, I know you're traveling up to Athens. Not necessarily a huge game, but it's going to be interesting to see. Are you excited about your trip up to Athens? This I'm very tomorrow. excited about it. It's actually my wife's birthday this uh, Happy birthday, this Mom. <laughs> and uh, we're celebrating her, one of her big milestones this year. I'm not going to tell you how old Five it is. Five-zero, I'll tell you, because I'm <laughs> excited. Okay, you didn't get me in trouble. You got yourself in trouble, but... Uh, she wanted to go to Athens, and that's what we're going to do. Wish her a happy birthday and tell you, baby, we love you. Glad you got 50. Hope you got at least 50 more in you. So, uh, anyway, we're going up to Athens. It doesn't look like it's going to be much of a game between the Southern Jaguars. They are a Division Two, not a Division Two, but a, uh, a Division One AA, the football championship series team. Uh, <clears throat> that's the type of uh, program that they are in. They're just one division below us. But they get a big paycheck, $650,000 for coming and play, play in Georgia, which is going to help their athletic program. And that's one of the reasons our bigger schools – uh, schedule some of these smaller schools. We got some a big game in at, in the swamp tomorrow as as Tennessee takes uh, their road game to Florida. I think that's going to be a, a great game, a, a very high powered uh, running game with Josh Dobbs and uh, the running back right now. His name is has slipped me. The running back, yeah, uh, from from Tennessee is going to be going up against what may be the best defense in the country at the University of Florida. So that's going to be a huge game. We got Kentucky. Uh, that um, is, is having a good season this year. And uh, they I can't remember exactly who they're playing right now, but another Southeastern Conference foe. So it's going to be, going to be a big season or a big day tomorrow in college football, and uh, especially in the Southeastern Conference. Things are, are beginning to shake up. And then, of course, next weekend, Alabama comes into Sanford Stadium. That'll be a huge game for the dogs. Uh, Long County's out here on the field uh, stretching. Our Raiders have, have yet to make it out. The quarterbacks are out warming up, and uh, I'm sure that we're just trying to, to get our guys pumped up and refocus. 34 to nothing, 229 left before we start. And uh, when you're up 
by so big at halftime as a coach, it's very important that you keep your guys focused. And I like what Coach Coker had to say before the half. Uh, come out and take care of business and not come out cocky. It's a long season left ahead, and, and you can't just uh, forget what's in front of you. You know, if the Raiders take care of business, uh, this thing is setting up for us this year as it's early in the season. So, uh, But still, just with some losses last week, uh, Jeff Davis going down, Vidalia, who's lost some injuries this year playing, um, can I remind you, Raider fans, that we're doing this without uh, one of our top players tonight in Jacob Carver at, on both sides of the ball. He plays uh, offense and defense. And uh, so if we take care of business, we could be – we've got a chance to be looking at uh, a two-seed this year. It's when you say there. he's one of our top players, I'm not trying to just build Jacob up, but in all the publications around, Jacob's not only one of the best players on our team, he's one of the best players in South Georgia. And uh, when you're missing that kind of firepower – uh, and we're down here leading 34 to nothing. Uh, it tells you what kind of focus that we have had this uh, to this week. And you got to credit, like you, like we have said, a young, young football team. So we're going to get ready here for the second half. Hope you stay tuned with us. Hope we can bring some excitement. Right now, we're going to take a quick station break. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle. Folks, we have a couple more scores. Shane. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes or if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent and the company that stands behind them. Auto Owners Insurance. Bennett Bennett and Johnson Insurance Agency in Alma is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Darn good for a team that uh, had a um, bad game last week. Um, I'd say we've come back. That's one of the things that the coaches were really concerned about coming into this week was being able to handle the adversity that they faced last week in the, the Benedictine game. And I would say that they have handled it with uh, a very good um, demeanor at being up 34 to nothing at uh, halftime. A few stats um, from, the, from the first half, or say a few hats. We had... 267 total yards rushing in the first half and 105 for the Long County Blue Tide. We had 132 yards on the passing side of the ball and 135 yards rushing. Uh, for Long County, we had 54 yards rushing and 51 yards passing. So uh, just a total domination of Bacon County in the first half as far on both sides of the ball. And I want to say a um, shout-out here for our offensive linemen. I don't know if you can tell from up there, but they have done an outstanding job in this first half watching them. They have just dominated the ball. There's a few times they've given a few, but uh, for the most part, our offensive line has done a heck of a job. I agree with Shane, and uh, that's a, a balanced a balanced attack. And any time we're – any kind of offensive team is that balanced – and you, you're going to have a good game. You're going to have 34 points. We're here for kickoff, and uh, Aubrey's teed it up, and he's going to kick it, and this time he's going to try to kick it as deep as he can, and he gets it received. Oh, it's dropped at the 10, and we got some Raiders around there, but he jukes us and gets to the outside, and he's around the 20 when he falls down at the 16-yard line, and that's where Long County will take over, first and 10. We had a young man wide open down there, and uh, – when he was running wide open, he didn't break down like you're supposed to break down and it just one little move. But we had plenty of pursuit down there by him dropping it. So um, good play by the way to open up the, the second half by uh, our kickoff coverage. It was a good uh, kick by Aubrey, too. Kick sure was. Deep. Sure was. Not only have our big hefties on offense done good, but our defensive line has just wreaked havoc tonight. Long County's coming out in their shotgun. They're going to take it and hand it to the belly, number 23, and he gets a couple blocks. And they you got can a tell quarterback in, don't they? No, no, same, same guy, number eight. Yep. And number he gains probably six yards, yards on the play, and he come out and ran that ball with authority. That's number 23. Number 21 was the guy running in the first half most of the time, Eric Crawford, who is a sophomore, and he's going to stay in. And they've got double twins down to the left or down to the right, the bottom of the field for us. Shotgun formation. Fullback in the backfield, halfback behind the quarterback. He's going to take it. He's going to hand it to number 23, and he shoots out of there, and he's down. It's a race down to finish, and let's see, number four. 
Brings him down in number 26 for the Raiders. Run him down, but not before he gains a huge gain. Boy, he hit the hole quick. Shot out there like a cannon, and I can tell you he's running with some authority right here. Ball spotted at the 44-yard line, and they're on our side of the 50 already. Two plays. He's going to take his snap, and he's going to put it in the belly, fake it, and the quarterback keeps it, and he gets out around the corner. We're chasing him, and we hit him as he forced him to shoot up in there, and that's what you got to do as a defense with a quick quarterback. That's right. I want to say something about Long County's number 58, Jonathan Holt, and he's just a junior, but he's a big offensive lineman. He's uh, the son of a Church of God pastor here, David Holton, and I uh, just wanted to give him a shout-out, him and his family both. Old preacher kid. Yeah. They're going to motion the guy across the field. That brings twins to the top. Number eight drops back, and he's going to throw it deep, and he's got a man down there, but it's overthrown. Ball falls at about the nine as our little cornerback there uh, got beat on the play. That was number 26, Ontario Moore, uh, who got – Beat a little bit. It wasn't bad, but it was just a speed thing. He just got outrun. And uh, it's uh, not only that, but it's a size battle for us Raiders. <laughs> but I tell you what, our guys are fast. They're quick. Long County in basically a double uh, twin set, top and bottom. Quarterback's going to take the snap, and he's going to run right up the middle, and he's a speedster, but he is met hard by – Demetrius Williams and it looked like Wesley Cothern coming across. No, that was K.J. Brown. We hadn't called his name a lot, but he's been in on just about every tackle, and that's going to be fourth down and about two. two. Yeah. And this is a big fourth down for the Raiders as we get set. They're trying to rush it to the line. They're Long gonna County run looking. Quarterback. Yeah, they're going to run the quarterback. Run that or number 23, who's looked, who's looked pretty good. Quarterback tries to hard count us. And he doesn't get us as we're stacked about nine, committed nine in the box. And there we come. And this time he's going to hand it to 23, but he's met in the backfield and he didn't get it. <coughs> Good job by the Raiders there as they held him on fourth down. And he's definitely short. And that'll be first down for the Raiders. And our offense will get it early here in the third quarter. And that was a good stand by our defense. K.J. Brown, we had one play. They busted up the middle. A quick hitter, and their quarterback who's given us a little bit of trouble all night. As I've said, the broken play has been their best play, uh, but they hand off to him, and, and we met him in the backfield. It looks like we brought the house. We knew they were going to try to run it. Demetrius blew up a blocker, took on a blocker, and forced the guy to bounce it back inside. Aubrey's looking to the sideline. We got our ace package in. Twins to the top and the bottom. K.J. Brown in the backfield. Takes the snap in a seven-step drop straight back, and he's got some pressure, but he eludes it, and he gets to the outside and gets to the corner, and he's going to gain about three yards on the play and what should have been a sack and a loss of Aubrey Carter creates something out of nothing, and it'll be a second down and seven. It looked like we had uh, one of our receivers here. Evidently, it, it almost looked like a we didn't get the communication out wide because one of our receivers did not – run his pattern, the one that, that uh, Aubrey was looking for. We got second and a long eight, or a long seven. We got trips to the bottom of our screen, and Osceo Washington up top. There's one safety in the middle of the field. We're going to motion out to the trip side, and we got a man. We're going to dump it to him out in the flats, and this drop hit him right in the chest. Scott, He's going to drop down and give us those push-ups that we do. And that's going to be third down and a long seven for the Raiders. 929 here, 34 to nothing. Our defense held them early, stopped them as they were trying to score. And we've got trips, fullback KJ in the backfield to the trip side, Aubrey at quarterback. He's done a good job so far tonight leading his troops. Offensive line has created a pocket and walls when we needed to run. We're going to take it and we're going to throw it out to Demetrius Williams. He shoots across the 40. He drops a man. And falls forward. Whoa, my Lord, what a lick. I mean, the guy did a backflip. He, I, what kind of wrestling move was that with the forearm just threw him back? And the rev is just oh ecstatic because if you could have seen that, that poor young man, ugh, he doesn't know where he's at right now. This was the linebacker. Power drive. <laughs> This was the linebacker coming up to make the tackle on the receiver. And our receiver, Amitris Williams, the punisher, which is, that's just what we're going to have to call him, 
run into him, and the first thing that hit was the back of that poor player's head. That was out. Ouch. However, with all that excitement, we get a penalty and backs us up holding. It's going to be third down and 15 now. And we're still going to stack trips. We're tight to this side of the field, set up on the left hash. And Aubrey's going to going. drop straight back, and he's looking deep, but he's flushed out of the pocket on the run. He throws it to Snell, a good catch. Knocked out of bounds at about the 40, though. But you like to see that execution. That was good. And Snell ran about a 15-yard or a 10-yard curl route and a throw and catch by our quarterback. And we're going to keep our offense in, fourth down and six. Pooch kick, is that what we're going to see or are we going to go for it? We probably will, but with the way the defense is playing, it, it wouldn't surprise me if we go for it. We are up 34 to nothing. But Coach Kofer likes to keep his gas on the pedal with our young guys and kind of send a message. Trips up to the right. We're spread out more. Oh, big Jesus. I know Akeem Peterson, our senior, jumped off as he was getting a little bit excited down there. Well, that can tell you real quick that was not going to be a punt. We were going for it. We were going for it. And Long County's a little bit excited as they've held us for the second time tonight. Fourth and ten. If we if it, we choose to punt here. And it is fourth down and ten now. 34 to nothing. I'm not sure when the running clock comes into effect, what the score has to be. Aubrey is going to drop back. He's standing at about the 27. He drops it, but there's no rush. End over end, beautiful kick, and it's going to roll and bounce almost down. It's going to down it at about the 19-yard line, and a great job by Aubrey. There, and that's where Long County will take over here. 8-34, 34 to nothing. And it's going to be first down at the 29-yard line. And that was a good job by Aubrey. It was. That was a terrible snap. But uh, he got it away. Uh, I thought for a minute he was going to kick it into the lineman because they were coming at him real quick. But uh, he, he got the it off it. the old pooch kick. Good low line drive. It was. End over end. It was a great kick. Long County's going to get it. And they've got... Basically, twins to the right. They're going to take it and hand it to number 23, who's been a disaster so far. At that time, that play was a disaster. Gain of one. <laughs> Good play by our defense. You can tell he's trying. they're trying to get to the middle of our defense. For that, That's where they – I know it sounds crazy, but that's where they've had the most success tonight. When you do with a fast team, you run right at them. That's right. Number eight's their quarterback still, and they got twins to the top. This time he's going to drop straight back. He's got a man in the flats, but he's looking deep, and this time he's got a complete pass to number 10, and we missed the broken tackle, and he's down the sideline. He tries to cross up and tackle by his own guy, and Demetrius Williams and Kevontae Merritt for the Raiders, but not before a huge gain, and the first completion of the night for that young man, number eight. Well, just to give you a picture of what you're looking at here, we've got uh, – we don't have anybody that's any deeper than about five yards off the ball. We're just daring them to throw the ball. So they, when they do have a completion, if they uh, make one person miss, then they've got an open field. But uh, Long County takes the snap, and he's going to go right up the middle for a gain of five, ten, eight, nine. Just yep. rolling down there, and he hit right at us at the middle like we were just talking. And I think uh, the Long County – Coaches have tapped into our broadcast. Yeah, <laughs> evidently it sounds like it. I'm telling you, that number eight, I, I just, that just speaks volume to how we played tonight because we have contained him. He's a fast little guy. Second down and one for the Raiders. Let's see if our defense can hunker down, as Larry Munson would say. They're going to hand it number 23, and he's got a hole, and we're just chasing him. First down and more as he crosses 25, right around the 25-yard line, and they're almost in the red zone here. Rev, and I yep. just don't like it. I want to put up a goose egg. They're on the 25-yard line. We have played very, very well tonight. I guarantee you Coach Kofer's about to have a stroke over there. He doesn't want anybody. Are we going to call a timeout? Absolutely. This is not the way Coach Ken Kofer imagined our second half going. So we're going to take a timeout with seven minutes and eight seconds left in the third quarter. Your Bacon County Red Raiders, 34, Long County nothing. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent 
Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. Bennett Bennett and Johnson Insurance Agency in Alma is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Nope, we're not. <laughs> we're coming back to you. Rolls out, he throws it to a man out in the flats who makes a move, makes one man miss. He's across the 10, he's down at the 5, and he's going to be down at the 1-yard line as he tried to stretch it out, and a good play by number 4. And We've seen him when he's gotten space, he can make something happen. We're going to go down to Shane Bennett, our family vision care, eyes on the field. Shane, talk to us about the mood right now of the Raiders. Yeah, guys, that last time out, it was just a wake-up call, say, guys, wake up. You know, you're coming in a little flat. Um, uh, even there on, the, on that play, uh, offense and defense moving. Defense just just not playing up to what we were in the first half. You know, big big challenge to come back after the first half like that, to come back out in the second half, same, have the same momentum. And that's exactly what Coach Kofer was talking about uh, at the end of the first half, is we have to maintain that, keep the gas on, or the pedal on the gas the whole time. That's right, and that's a good message to send to a young team as you're trying – Coach Kofer in his second season here at Bacon County, and uh, he's trying. Rev, you got a – look like you got a good view from up there. Yeah, we've got uh, – we had a motion penalty. It's actually backed long up to the six-yard line now. It's first and six. They're going to hand and it number 23. Score. Untouched. <laughs> Touchdown. And credit Long County there for blocking. Good job blocking and – Boy, look at number 88 running on the field. He's a big boy, man. He's a big, big man. And there's something for the Long County Blue Tide fans to celebrate, and that's what you hear in the background. 34 to 6 now. And uh, they're trying to run people on and off the field, not used to scoring tonight. Maybe they're getting a sub as one guy comes running off the field. However, 627 here in the third quarter. It's 34 to 6, and they're going to go for two, and they got a man open and touchdown as we absolutely whiffed on the block down there. We sure did. Anyway, we're going to take a break. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle. Seven seconds and very few times have I seen the quarterback get a little bit upset. But uh, he got a little bit upset just in on that two-point conversion. The fact that uh, one of our players, uh, rather than take on the the running back, uh, just kind of backed off a little bit. And uh, that's the kind of stuff you can't have as a football player. So I'm sure the film don't lie. And uh, that's going to be a bad film session when that play comes around. Coach Kofer will instruct that. We That's the one thing we've had this year, though, is the Raiders. We have been an aggressive and punishing team when it comes to being physical on the field. They're going to take it, and they're going to kick this one deep, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. However, Nacio takes it at the five-yard line. He's got a wall in front of him, and that man's fast, but he breaks outside of his wall and runs right into the arms of number 25, and the Raiders will start inside the 20. At number 25 uh, for them, Jamin Davis. He's a defensive end, uh, but really all night long he's been playing at the corner position, and he is a big young man. I think he probably runs about 6'3 or 6'4 and weighs about 210, and um, he's athletic. He has to be athletic to be playing on the, uh, the, the defensive end, or right now they've got him lined up at wide side linebacker. We're going to come out, and we're going to come out in our heavy set, and it looks like Jewel is in at quarterback as he runs the ball a lot. This time he's going to take it. He tries to bounce outside again. No blocking on the play. 52 takes him down for a loss in the first loss of the game for the Raiders. 
And uh, Joel, he likes to try to get outside. Well, that, that wasn't the quarterback's fault there. Somebody completely whiffed on that uh, linebacker. Irwin County in a fight 28-21 to 21 with Telfair. That's surprising. We're going to shift to the horseman with Brody Fitchett, who has been on fire tonight when he's ran the ball. He barks it hard and looks to the sideline to get the signal. Anthony Madison in at blocking high snap, but Brody handles it, and boy, they are all in it. But he breaks free. Oh, what a run by Brody as they were all in our backfield, and Long County is really, bringing really it. bringing it right now. They scored a touchdown, and it's like all of a sudden the, the on switch has been flipped. And there is plenty of time in this ball game for something to happen. I've seen crazier things happen. Third down two. and seven. Yep, Jewel looking to the sideline. They all check their wristbands now. We're going right to left from where we're sitting on your radio dial. Jewel does throw the ball very well. Long County's got about nine people in the box. They're going to back off from their coverage, and we're going to shift to that horseman. Fans have come alive here, and he's going to fake run it. He's got a man. He throws it in the seam, and a great catch. He's at the 50. Oh, and they strip the ball out at about the 45, and Long County picks it up, and they're tackled. And a turnover by the Raiders. A big great, turnover. Great throw, but uh, they caught Anasio from behind and grabbed the ball and stripped it from him. He was actually trying to position the ball in his hands because Anasio was about to break away. And a good hustle play there. And unfortunate for the Raiders, that's our first turnover of the night. And it's 447 here in the third quarter, 34 to 8. And Long County just has the ball back with a little momentum here. Let's see what our guys have got. Come on, guys, dig deep and stop this momentum. One thing we couldn't have or shouldn't have um, is a turnover, and that's exactly what we did have. Number eight's going to take the snap here, and he's going to roll out and try to set the edge, but he doesn't. He throws it deep, and he's got a man and incomplete. There was a push-off just then. They didn't get it called on him, but he pushed off at the last minute Against Trey Stewart, that should have been offensive interference, but it wasn't. Good That's coverage. where he got the separation there at the end. That was a good call, a good observation, and good coverage by Trey Stewart, Yeah, like you said. Cook County over Brantley County, 21-2 to right now. Long County still in. They got twins to the top, and everybody except for the center jumped on that play for Long County, and that'll back them up. Quarterback's patting his chest like it may have been his fault. Second down and 15, and their offensive coordinator is on the field. He's, uh, he's uh, unhappy as he knows that every possession has to be a score from this point out. Coffee County, 14, Effingham, 7. Thanks to Les Four minutes Evans. and 40 seconds left. Your good old buddy Les can't text you tonight. He can text me. We got twins down to the right. Long County going to send that number four in motion. He's dangerous. They're going to hand it to him, and he may have the corner. He shoots up in there. Oh! <laughs> Guess who? The Punisher. I'm telling you, he's on cleanup <laughs> duty every night, son. <laughs> he helmet. hit the guy so hard his helmet came off. Helmet I think he may have broke off. his helmet. And he just come across. Is that guy's and fast? Down at 11. But uh, he's going to be looking. He's going to be looking for Ametrius for days. He's going to be dreaming, have nightmares at number one. 421 here, 34 to 8. Ball spotted on about the 30, I don't know, four-yard line. I can't count sometimes. He's going to take the snap, and he's going to roll to his right. They're trying to set the edge, and he throws it deep. Trey's in good coverage. Got position. And Offensive man, interference. All Come over on. Him. That was a terrible no call there. Yeah. As Trey Stewart had absolutely wonderful position. It was great coverage by Trey. It still amazes me at how people who call themselves football fans thinks that that was pass interference on the defense clearly in front of us to see a blue jersey. Come on. He did everything he could to Trey to bring him In fact, him if that had been on the streets, he would have got uh, charged for uh, assault. Assault. <laughs> That's right. Good coverage for the Raiders there. Trey Stewart on that coverage. He's going to drop back, and they're trying uh -oh. to get him out of the pocket. He's out this time, but he's getting chased down, and he throws the ball out of bounds as uh, our young, fast, speedy guy, number nine, the Moore kid. Ayrton Moore. I can never say Ayrton's name. I can always say Ontario's, but not Ayrton. <laughs> Ayrton Moore, number nine, and that's going to bring – was that a fourth down? That was a fourth down. Your Red Raiders get the ball back, so the turnover – 
other than costing us a little bit of momentum as far as the drive was concerning. And a good, good play, the, the, uh, the turnover didn't cost us very much right there. We get the ball right back, and we need to nail this down. We need another score. We need uh, we need a, I would like a long drive that just takes up some time. Three minutes and 58 seconds left in the third quarter, 34 to 8. I don't know how I missed that was a fourth down play. I guess I'm just getting too excited in the game or play with my iPad one. Aubrey back in at quarterback. He's going to put Brody Fitchett in motion. This time he's going to hand takes it, it. And he's around the corner and a big game, man. That was a good little read option play there as they thought KJ had the ball, but Aubrey bounced out for a gain of four. Well, that, like you mentioned to uh, about Mr. Jewell a while ago, Dawson Jewell, as he tried to go sideways, if Aubrey probably would have picked up another two or three yards if he just went north and south there. He's not going to outrun anybody to the edge. But it was a good play and a good read. This time we're bringing Inacio and Washington in motion. We hand it to him, and he gets the corner. Great good block, block by, by Brody, Brody. Fitchett. He's across the 40 and running, and he falls down at about the 36 or 37-yard line. A little trash talking going on. Young man, it's 34-8. to eight. Look at the scoreboard is what they say on the field. Look at the scoreboard. 321 here. We just had a 30-yard gain, and he's wanting to talk smack. I love it. High school football. <laughs> High school football. Here we go. First down for the Raiders. And that speed play has really worked tonight. And I think the speed has been the difference in the game tonight. I think the, I think you're exactly right. Aubrey looks again. We've got trips down to one side and twins to the other. Quick throw to that Snell kid who can catch just about anything. And he was hit hard. I, it looked like he got dragged down. And he's got something to say. I like it. almost it. looked the way his head reacted. It almost looked like it was a uh, face mask. But. Uh, the side judge was right there on it, so uh, it may have looked like that. I couldn't see it. The The Long County bench was blocking our view, but just the reaction of the way Legondrick's head moved, it looked like he may have had a face mask. But Anyway, it's uh, second and seven. Our ace package with our twins, we're going to bring Trey Stewart in motion. This time we're going to hand it to Trey. He drops it, picks it up, kicks it, f picks it up again after a loss, and he's still running and gets down the sideline. Wow. What a play by Stewart as he literally dropped the ball, kicked it, picked it up, dropped it, kicked it, then took off down the sideline and actually gained three yards on the play. <laughs> actually, he lost about three, but anyway. <laughs> well, the first spot. <laughs> he looked like he got some. 253 there, 34 to 8. It's going to be third down and about 12. I hit him in a bad spot. He handed it off to him right between the numbers. Well, you can tell Trey is raw around the edges, is learning. In, it's really his first year playing. Sure is. Uh, he had to sit last year as he was trans, kind of transferred in or whatever they say, moved in. And uh, But he's done a very good job, and he's learning on the go. Aubrey in shotgun this time. He drops back. He pumps it down the sideline, throws a quick slant. And Great was that catch. ball caught? It was. What a catch by Xavier. That's Xavier. Is that Xavier, Xavier Hayes? Xavier Hayes, yes it is. Mr. Hands on the field there. He made up for the drop. Man, a 12-yard pass, and that ball was really thrown in a good spot. As we had somebody on his back and over the top. What a catch by Xavier. I've, I've, First my hat's down. off to Xavier. He's had a very good night tonight, and that was an outstanding catch to keep the drive going. 14-13 to 13 in the fourth quarter in Hazelhurst, Georgia. Jeff Davis is on top. Aubrey barks the signal. We've got trips to the left. Ron Johnson is in. Has our third receiver here. Nacio up top, one safety in the middle of the field. And we got a delay of game called on the Raiders. So that's going to back us up to first and 15. Yeah, it was taking a little bit of time. We've also got Wesley Cawthorn in it at the tailback position. Wesley gave us our first score of the game when he come out. And on the second play of the game, um, he ran that ball in in a good run. And remember, he, we've got to name a play of the game. Yeah, he ATC. really looks He really looks good. He's quick. He's quick to the hole. He's really quick in the middle. Before they can look up, if he just gets a little bit of a crease, he's, he's sometimes where Wesley gets in trouble is he leans that head forward. Aubrey going to take it and pull it, make a move and a missed tackle and a couple of jukes by our quarterback who don't juke much. <clears throat> gets back to the line of scrimmage. So we're going to have second and 10. And 10. Xavier Hayes checks back in as Ron Johnson goes off to the side. Ron's been around the program a lot, product of the program, done a good job. Yep. Hung in there, been to every practice, and not missed many, if he's missed any at all because of work. Kudos to that young man. 
I'd like to see him get him a six. It'd be nice. Sure would. Well, I tell you, we haven't talked much about uh, the Mr. Snell kid. I can never say his first Gondrick, name. yeah. But he has played good tonight on both sides of the ball. And we got another delay of game on the Raiders. As my man's getting ready to get this game over. He's ready to go home. His wife just called and said, I got some greens on the, on the, on the uh, oven. Minute 33 seconds left, and we back up again. Now it's second and 15. We gained five to get our yardage back, and now we're backing it back up again. Um, I don't know who or what is not in a rhythm. We've not had this problem all game long, and we've got the same personnel in, looks like. We're probably trying a few things. Aubrey drops back, and he's got a man. Safety other. What a catch! Touchdown! What a throw and catch by Aubrey Carter to Ignacio Washington. And a good job as he had to keep both feet in. My man's ready to go to the next level. He said not one feet, but I'll keep two feet in. And the referee was right on top of it. That ball was a perfectly thrown ball. And it was a, a great catch. He split two defenders. I mean, how do you draw it up any get over, yeah. get over the top. And if we learned anything, we just learned about humility. That was the same man that was running his mouth a little bit. And the game has a way of humbling you down. Great job of execution by the Raiders after a couple of um, delay of games. And Dylan Kelly is going to attempt the extra point here. Aubrey to hold. They get a good rush, and I think they got a piece of it, and it's going to fall off to the left as that young man has hustled number two all night. It's 40 to eight here, 126 left in the third quarter. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle. up as uh, our kickoff team has got a lot of uh, playing time tonight. They sure have, and that's always a good thing. 44 to 44 to 7, we're on top as they've got their third and fourth string in the game now. Jeff Davis 14, McIntosh 13, and there's a pooch kick by Aubrey, and the young man fair catches it at about the 36-yard line, and that's where Lone County will take over and try to score as it's been a few tonight. I expect us to, to keep in some key personnel on our defense, but uh, I'm expecting now uh, that we're going to bring in some young folks and uh, get them some playing time. That's right. Got a little headset problem here as it's wanting to come off. Wayne County losing to Liberty County 12-3, to and Wayne County's supposed to be better now. Now taking, they're going to hand it to number 23 who gets a – a little crease, a gain of about four or five on the play. Second down and second down and five for the Blue Tide. Really paying attention to that Jeff Davis McIntosh score, as it would be big if Jeff Davis could win tonight. We just throw everything up, and we'll put us all back in a in a back in an even race. Now they're going to hand it number 23, number 22 or 23. He shoots up in the hole on the gain of a first down for the Raiders. We've got a lot of young. No, we don't. Looked like we had some new new numbers in there, but we're still we're still playing our guys, just rotating them in. We we definitely play team ball this year. We didn't see anything out of uh, number 23, Eric Crawford, just a sophomore, but he's been uh, he's been quite the spark plug since he's come in in the second half. Number eight, number he's eight. fast. He gets a crease and he gained, but he goes down quick as Demetrius <laughs> is hunting down there. And he ain't wanting to get up. Maybe Demetrius got him on the play. I thought he jumped over the top of him, but just the punishing hit, and he does get up, a gain of 11. And um, You talk about a kid that's probably five foot uh, eight. And weighs about 185 pounds. He's very, very thick, but very, very athletic. He's quick. He can stop on a dime, and he doesn't have a bad arm, even though I will say 
Maybe his mechanics is a little bit off, but Trip Stapleton, it looks like, is going to come in as number eight. They're going to bring him off and check him. They don't want to get him hurt. 40 to eight, it's a long season left to go in this game. Still a lot of time left, 310 in the third quarter. And I don't know if uh, the clock guy over there is paying attention or not. I'm sorry. That was seconds. Good job. My fault. Number 17 going to come in. He's going to hand it off and follow his blockers, but he's met in the hole. Wesley Cothran, Demetrius Williams, K.J. Brown, number 23, Devontae Merritt. It was a host. And you add Jacob Carver back in here. Mm. Mm. Really, really have a good team. And I'm going to tell you, Long County's got something to work with. Coach Flott left, and he was here, from I think, from Florida for a few years. Had the program kind of heading in the right direction. It's in the end of the third quarter is what's, what's happened here, but they got a young coach in, and uh, they might could do something. You know, I, I think you're right. He does have something to work with. Uh, this this trip Stapleton, he is a uh, he is a junior, but we're talking about a six foot four, two hundred twenty pound quarterback here. So I don't know if that was just giving number eight a, a breather or exactly what was happening, but uh, uh, looks like Stapleton has his hat off. So uh, we're lining up now to begin the fourth quarter. And 21 now to 13. Jeff Davis has added a score on in the fourth quarter. And our uh, Red Raiders are coming out, holding the guns up. I'm just going to, I feel it, Rev. I'm going to hold it up with them. You know, I actually got them up, too. Guns in there. Bang, bang. Number eight's back in the game for Long County. Just took him out to give him breathers. He's took a punishment at times tonight from this defense. And it looks like we're going to empty the middle of the field now. We're going to man up here with our cornerbacks. we got about seven in the box, maybe eight. You know, taking on a hand at 21. He tries to bounce it outside, breaks a tackle or two, and here he goes. He's rumbling down the sideline as the Raiders got a little sloppy there. One of the few plays tonight, they've missed some tackles. And a first down for Long County. Coffee 20 to 7 now over Effingham. A big region game for Coffee County. Sounds like Ware County's the team to beat in the region. You know, that was up in the air in the beginning. I also hear Glen Academy's got a very, very good team this year, too. So Coffee knocked Glen off last week. Did they really? Beat them to death. Okay, maybe they don't. <laughs> Number eight, hands the ball to number 21. He's got a hole, but oh, he's met hard up. by our main man, Demetrius Williams. Yep, when he gets his hand on him, they stop. Demetrius is playing with a sore wrist tonight. You can see from the very get-go, he's had his wrist taped up, and uh, he scored touchdowns. He's caught passes. He's threw passes, and he's. I don't I think I would be wrong in saying that he is leading the team in tackles. Him and Wesley Cothard have been in on a lot of them, that's for sure. Number eight drops back. He's going to throw it deep. And Terry Moore in coverage. And it goes up. Touchdown. As he just caught it over our guy. And the guy flips the ball to Ontario. And he's played very good for us. But just got beat on that play. So that's He got his head around. 14. He had him played, yeah. So uh, 40 to 14 with 10 minutes and 43 seconds left. You know, sooner or later, when you got six foot three, six foot four receivers, you keep throwing it up. Sooner or later, you're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get something, and uh, I think that's what happened. Anterior may be five eight. Yeah, he weighs about 155 pounds. They lined up in the same extra point as we are. 21 is back, and he's gonna take it. And they're gonna go for two. They're gonna try to run it in. And they do, unless his knee was down. They're going to touch down. Two-point conversion is good. I'm sorry. That makes it 40 to 16. It should be. 16, Score point short, right. 15. 10 43 here left in the fourth quarter. It's early. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle.
Kofri on the field uh, kind of barking instructions to our deep guy, As telling a, him to uh, to get to the wedge. Yeah, because uh, it looks like it, we're, we're expecting an onside kick is what we're lining up for, and he's the only deep man back. Franklin's our senior, another product of the team, and, and that's what we keep seeing. These guys are sticking with it, and that's when you begin building programs. That's exactly right. That's a good point. So we're going to see here they're lined up. Going to see if they're going to attempt it or not. And nope, he's going to kick it deep to Franklin. He's going to catch it at about. Oh, he drops it, but he picks it up. We got a and wedge, he's got a hole right. or so. He'll step in. Going to jump up in there and a good return. But he's brought down by a host of Long County Blue Tide. But he crosses. I don't know. Brings it out to the 26. Good return by Franklin Brinson. Named him early. When his young career turn up. I'd come out and all the kids, and that's what he would always yell before the game, turn up. So I call him Turn Up Brinson. We're actually keeping uh, some of our first team on there, uh, on the field. I don't know there's been a fall off. I don't think Coach is quite ready to to say uh, we're going to turn it over to our, uh, you know, to our second teams and our JV. He's wanting to, he's wanting to keep the pressure on a little bit. Oh, man, that's got to be a legal shift. They're not going to call it. Brody Fritz is – Fitchett's going to take the ball and try to get outside, and he does. He's holding on by his shirt, and he's he's still on his feet, and he's got the sideline. He gets a block by Ignacio. He jumps back up inside, and what a run. 11, 12-yard gain by Fitchett, and he, I mean, he should have been down days ago. <laughs> he has had some kind of game. He, he just, just quick, keeps those, a little pinball, yeah, just bouncing does. off of people. Pew, pew. Just keeps those little feet just churning. And that was a Good block, got a good block downfield by our wide receiver, Nacio. Good Nacio job. Nacio made him. a good block, sure did. A surprise score in single A. Turner Listen County, this, guys. 44, Listen. Charlton nothing, and that is the final on the Honda South Georgia game of the week. Wow. Dawson Jewell in at quarterback, and he's going to hand it to that Fitchett guy who goes up the middle and just dragging folk, fro folks. I can't say it. Frogs, whatever. Game of about two on the play. Yeah, he got hit right in the face by that big number <clears throat> 25 for them. Uh, Jamin Davis, He's we've called his name, and he's been in on a lot tonight. He's he's just more athletic than anybody on the field uh, on the, as far as Long County is concerned. KJ, he, and their, he and their quarterback. KJ and Cothran come on the field to give Dawson Addison. Jewell is the quarterback. Anthony Madison a break. Jules is going to take it, and he's going to hand it to Brody, who gets it up the middle, and he gets hit, but not before a gain of about three or four. Four and yards. Be third down and manageable for the Raiders. We're going to burn that clock. We're just going to run it. And we should. Jules on, in on probably his third series of the night, maybe his fourth series. And he's going to take the snap, and he's going to hand it to Fitch it again. He's got a hole and a first down across the 50, 45, down to the 40. Great block for our yard offensive line. line. A good job by our offensive line, like you said. And now we're giving it to Brody Fitchett. And, and uh, Rev, we've talked about it. We are doing this again without our stud, our horse, our go-to guy, the guy who towed us late last year. Jewel going to take it, roll out. He's got a man wide open and just too strong as he – was getting Throws rushed the on the play. Yeah. Jules just a sophomore, is that right, this year? Just a sophomore. Uh, that is our, it looks like going to be our quarterback for the future. He's got all kind of tools. Good looking athlete. He's quick. He's strong. Uh, got a good arm. But uh, you can tell just then he was rolling to his left. He's a right handed quarterback as he rolled to his left. He didn't quite get his feet set and turned around, his shoulders turned. Like he should, but all of that comes with the uh, with practice. Going to take it, and he's going to hand it to Cothran now. Cothran dancing around, and a gain of about five on the play, and that'll bring up third down and five as we've ran the ball well, and we're going to have to name our ATC broadband play of the game coming up at the end. Be sure to stay with us uh, for our post game show as well as we'll hear from Coach Kofer. Maybe we can get some uh, interviews from our players. Maybe a few. Maybe we can talk to Demetrius Williams who is in at quarterback right now, and he's going to shift Wesley Cothran to his left. Mitchell is going to take it, and he's going to wait, and he shoots it up, and he's got a big game dragging folks down to the 25-yard line. First down, Raiders. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm about ready to see Mitchell call it a night. He went for his knees that time. That's right. Yeah. 
we got somebody that stepped in and almost <laughs> said exactly the same thing that uh, that we just said. Uh, we're about ready to see our big guy, Mitris Williams. He's he's played. We don't we don't want to see him get hurt with this kind of score. still in. This time he's going to handle a little counterplay. We haven't seen this this year. And some hitting going on and helmets flying from Long County. 32, Wesley Cothern gains a yard, three yards, maybe four. And that clock is ticking, and it can't tick fast enough. 40 to 16 as from the beginning, from the opening start of the game, the Raiders' offense has moved the ball at will. Four minutes and 40 or five minutes and 40 seconds left. Clock ticking, Demetrius Williams lined up. At quarterback, he shifts. Horseman package, and we're going to hand a counter. Oh, and, and we fumble. fumble. And, and they pick it up, score. and there's no one around him. As we try to counter play, the only guy that can catch him is not going to. Touchdown, Blue Tide. I don't think we have the right personnel in there to, to run that play that time. We got flags flying in from somewhere. I don't know. They threw it, and it was back. I don't know if that's going to be a block in the back or what, but you can consider that a gift from Bacon County, Long County, as we just kind of wrap that present up and give it to them. That's right. We were just trying a new play there. We got laundry on the field. Personal foul against us. Evidently, we showed an attitude. I hope nobody gets kicked off the field or kicked off the Personal foul against them. Touchdown's good, and they're going to penalize us on the kickoff. Five minutes and 17 seconds left, and we've got uh, 22, 40 to 22. That's right. And we've not, we've not had an answer for their two-point conversion yet. They just take the snap and run straight in. When it comes to this, it's man on man. This time it looks like we got Demetrius lined up to take it. And they're going to try to throw it. And he's going to score jump. again. Touchdown. Yeah. Or two-point conversion. 40-24 to 24 here, 517 in the fourth quarter. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle. Just talking about the play, uh, a little counter play we're trying to work on and uh, struggle with all year long, but uh, kudos to the coaching staff and just trying to get it to work. And, and those things about those counter plays is if you can stop penetration, those things can break for a big game. Well, that right there, it may have been a big game, but that was just a miss exchange. You got one hand, one uh, running back handing off to another running back, and it. It just uh, it didn't look good from the very start. He was fumbling it as he was going into the hole. I don't really know if he if the handoff was handed high. It looked like he may have tried to hand it to him up on his shoulder pads in the middle of his chest instead of his bread basket. However, I will take 40 points. 40 points early, and here we go. And this time they are going to try to kick it, and it goes through, and we get it. it goes through our front line because it was kicked kind of hard, but guess who fell on it? Number two, Brody Fitchett. Point two, one, eleven, ten, thirty-two. Has played very well for us tonight. I sure have. Five minutes and just about five minutes left. Forty to twenty-four, and uh, and final from Hazelhurst, Georgia. Jeff Davis, twenty-one. McIntosh, thirteen. And that kind of evens the playing field out, like you said, and gives us an opportunity. We got problems. We don't know who's coming in, who's not. Looks like we're going to may take a timeout. We're not going to take a timeout. We're heading for a delay if we're not careful. We still got Demetrius in at quarterback. He shifts him, and he takes the snap. We, we jumped a little early. Wesley met in the backfield drop at the line of scrimmage. And if we're not careful, this thing can get close. 
Oh, Coach Kofer is getting very, very frustrated. He calls a timeout. He's about fixing to have church for these boys. And we're going to take a timeout with four minutes and 16 seconds left. You're listening to Red Raider Radio on 93.5 The Eagle. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes or if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent and the company that stands behind them. Auto Owners Insurance. Bennett Bennett and Johnson Insurance Agency in Alma is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Still having church, prayer meetings, what uh, I call it. And uh, it's when a coach uh, throws off his headset and walks out into the middle of the field. He's good and fed up with our effort right now. And uh, we're just trying to carry it, carry it to the house. But if we're not careful, stranger things have happened with four minutes left in a football game and somebody to come back and be able to score 16 points. We're only two touchdowns away uh, for them making this a ball game. And uh, we just we need to be able to control the ball here, second and ten. Meechers takes the snap. He's going to get it and run outside. We miss a block, and I see I missed one on that play. We're going to go down to Shane Bennett, our eyes on the field, brought to you by Family Vision Care. Shane, what was the confusion down that time for our offense? Well, there was a little bit of confusion everywhere on the field right then, but bottom line, Coach Kofer said you have taken your foot off the pedal. He was giving them a hard time about just taking that, 40, you know, that lead that we had and just kind of laying down on it. And he told them, you will take this ball down the field and score. Now, it's third down now. It's going to be fourth down, and we're going to be short. About three yards, two long yards, and see what the Raiders do. And I hope we don't get a little too. We need to punt this ball away here. Sure do. We need to give them a long field to work on, and we're not going to do it. Oh, wow. And we're going to get a first down. Good call. That's why Coach Kofer is the man. Yep. We get a first down, which is big. We're going to let that clock run now. Um, they still have, looks like they still got three timeouts left. I don't know what they're going to try to do, if they're going to try to kill the clock or they're just going to concede. But with two, two touchdowns down, I'm, I'm starting to call some timeouts. Meacher's still in. He's going to hand it to Cothran, who got the first down, and now he's got a gain of four. No, that's a gain of two. Sometimes I get confused because they hand the ball off about four yards in the backfield. Yeah. <laughs> was a gain of four, second down and six for the Raiders. I'm curious as to why Mitris is running at quarterback right now. Maybe he's the more of the run package. There, there he goes. goes. He breaks through. He he's goes. still going. He's across the 40, and he's rumbling people down. They can't take him at 35-yard line, first down Raiders. Maybe that's why he's in there. <laughs> there he goes. He ran through there. Good-looking athlete. I'm, I'm – I'm proud of Amitris Williams. He's got a he's got a heart as big as this football field always has had. We're rushing it here, and Amitris takes a snap in that horseman package and bounces back up into the middle. Gain of five. In comes Jewel, and out goes Amitris, and that may be it. I'm that wondering. may be the night for Amitris. I'm guessing they're giving Aubrey a rest. I hope he's not injured, as we have seen Aubrey play, finish the game at these spots. Maybe he's just not the run package. Jewel's yeah, going to get a Jewel. hole and slam it up in there, but he gets stopped, but not for a gain of four. Good run by our young quarterback. Well, I see Aldry, uh, Aubrey, Aldry. I see Aubrey on the sideline over there. He looks like everything's fine. I don't think we just we're just not going to throw the football. And, uh, K, and we should. KJ's in at uh, set in at quarterback position now, and he's going to pound it. And that's going to be third down and third down run. And I don't know. He's going to be close to a Raiders first down. I believe he got it, Matt. Quarterback, what have you thought? Well, I'm to be honest with you, I'm thinking at this moment in time, kid, this clock not run out. Let's go. Minute and 15 seconds left. And uh, we have literally made a trip down to the hottest place on earth. I'm on this telling you, boys, they've got a 10 press box up here and uh, didn't turn on the air and we come into a sweat box tonight. K.J. Brown gets the handoff from Dawson and falls forward for a gain of two. And I don't think there's – there. we don't have many negative plays no, at all. That's no. one of the good things about our offense this year. We execute at a very, very high level. 
You reckon Coach Cofer's going to? No, he's not. He's going to hand it off to KJ. There he goes. They almost stopped as if that somebody blew the whistle on that play. It looked like and KJ was running really high. Yeah. And we're under 30 seconds now, 40 to 24. Bacon County's going to finish it off. Be be, be sure to stay tuned. We're going to name the ATC broadband play of the game. We're going to go down and talk to Coach Ken Kofer and uh, hear his thoughts. And we're going to throw it deep right now. Wide open touchdown. Lagondrick Snell. Lagondrick Snell as we stuck it in the belly. <laughs> and the heart. And the heart. And we're getting some rallies <laughs> up in the booth. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, good. I, uh, great call. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that just shows you the heart of Coach Kid Kofer. There uh, we go. <laughs> hey, hey we're boy, I don't know. Called classic. He's classic a guys and <laughs> everything else up here. Don't you love it when you travel down here and just take a take on a team and beat them down? Well, there. Uh, he's standing across the field. We're standing up here in the press box with all these Long County fans. They turn around looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Classic guys. I love it, though, Rev. I love it. Be we got to hit an extra point. And, and we, we finally do. Dylan Kelly. He called it no good. That young man, number two for Long County, has given effort all night long. 12 seconds left to go here, and it's 47 to 24. The Red Raiders have added a late touchdown pass. Dawson Jewell to Snell. You're listening to 93.5, the Eagle. There, per Shane Bennett, as he told, uh, uh, as Coach Kofer told our players at the at the uh, the last time out, said we're going to go down there and score. And when you tell your players they're going to score, then you go score. So uh, that's exactly what uh, what Coach Ken Kofer did. 46, 46 to twenty four. Statesboro seven, Brunswick six, Ware County forty four to seven final. And they're going to kick it down and roll it down there. The Raiders do. Ten seconds still, and the clock's still going. As it's supposed to stop, but they're just going to let it run out here, get out of here. And uh, there you have it. 47 to 24 is your final. Is that right, or is yep. it 46 to 24? 46 to 24. We missed the extra point. Oh, we, I thought we made that It looked like it split the uprights, but they called it no good. I have no idea if it did. It looked, it looked good, but I, I wasn't at the angle. So 46 to nothing, uh, your Bacon County Red Raiders come down here at 46 to nothing, 46 to 24. Uh, your Bacon County Red Raiders come down here and make a statement. And uh, that puts us one and one in the region, two and two in the overall. Uh, no, three and two overall now. That's our fifth game. And we got a big open date next week, which is something that uh, is very, very needed. Yep, it's needed. We need to rest, get Jacob Carver rested up, get Demetrius rested up. They played very well tonight. Well executed game and a good job by our coaches towards the end. And uh, we got a little talking going on down here with our coaches. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to 93.5 The Eagle. chipping that's going on in the middle of the field as coaches are having a discussion and I have all ideas that had everything to do with that late touchdown pass uh, Long County didn't like it they did have three timeouts left and chose not to call the timeout so they were ready to concede the game but uh, 
for some reason, Coach Kofer felt like he needed to run that play. And uh, I think you, I think Shane is right, and I think you are right in saying that he told him we were going to score, and that's what he meant to do. You are going to have to be the judge whether you thought it was the right thing or not. Matt, quarterback. Yeah, yeah we live in a world. We just we just live in a world these days where nobody can do anything right. But uh, I I am on the side of Coach Ken Kofer in that play. Uh, afterwards, we, we, you know, we have to keep our attitudes in check. It's like you said, you got a young team, and you want to send a message. We're worried that our young team will fall down after a big loss. And you, it's, you know, just a, just good football play. We just got to stay after it. Uh, you know, in the past, in the past, one of the problems for us at Bacon County, we've been. Uh, We've been okay with mediocrity, and I think Coach Kofer is trying to send the message we're not going to be mediocre anymore. Here again, you're going to have to make the judge or be the judge on whether or not you thought it was a, a good play or not. He's not, he's not uh, been hired to make friends. He's been hired to win football games and motivate our football team to carry it to the next level. We're tired of going to the playoff one time, uh, you know, every year and then get putting out the first round. We're trying to push it farther, and uh, we need an attitude that says that we will not quit, we will not stop. We scored our 40 points like we wanted to tonight and finished the game off. And we're going to try to get a hold of Shane. I, I noticed that Shane's uh, headsets are off down there, but we will talk to uh, Coach Kofer and we will talk to some players. Uh, we're going to go back to the studio for a few minutes. You're listening to 93.5 The Eagle. 